episode, I'm on, I'm psyched. Dude, I'm psyched for that as well. Yeah, no more audio drift. No more fucking cutouts, hopefully. Shit, I might have spoken too soon. Oh, boy. Well, what's happening? Uh, no, nothing. I'm just <laughs> I probably just jinxed it. <laughs> um, we've had a lot of audio issues um, lately, Michael. It's been fucking ridiculous. Yeah? Like, like what? Dude, this thing called audio drift, where, like, over time my audio will slight will go slightly faster or slower than than brett's so like one episode i spent two hours having to shave off like 0.2 seconds at a time to line up our audio because it would just like be lined up for like five minutes and then all of a sudden we're speaking over each other i'm like what the fuck and i just like take off a half a second and then it's fine and then 10 minutes later it happens again and it's i spent hours fixing it and brett had (laughs) to do the same thing yeah oh dude it was fucking horrible we got it figured out (laughs) <laughs> we got to figure it out. I think we fixed the issue. What up, buddies? And welcome to another episode of Earbuds, the podcast where two buds talk about one album for a long time. Oh, but, 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 wait, wait, wait a second, uh, sir. This remix. is a special episode of Earbuds and Friends, where we Very, get yes. on a special guest. Very special guest. Our first guest, also. And... A very special guy. Don't worry about it, bud. We're still introducing you. Um, he's eating right now, but <laughs> he is one of the members of one of the best band in Austin, Mortalis. <laughs> he is an extremely talented guitarist and songwriter, singer. He's one Honor. of our best buds, and he's a new dad. He is our first guest, very special guest, Michael the Machine Munoz. <laughs> And we are your hosts, Lucas, the Dominican Dragon Indercovs, and Brett, the Dungeon Master Hanrahan. Ooh. Yes, thank you. That is my proper title. Dungeon Master. I feel very powerful with that. Uh, Michael, how are you feeling tonight? <laughs> well, it is a cold one in Austin, Texas tonight, and uh, I'm just sitting here in my messy ass living room eating some hot soup and drinking a lukewarm imperial <laughs> stout uh, which is the way you're supposed to drink it by the way so i'm thoroughly enjoying it it's it sounds like a very romantic night over there uh, uh, very sure. sensual <laughs> you're supposed to drink uh imperial stouts lukewarm um i think I think <laughs> I don't know there's like some that. sort of convention with certain kinds of beers, not all of them, but like ideally you want the temperature to be relatively warm. Like you don't want it to be like Oof. an ice cold beer. Like, uh, you know, I don't know about you don't that. want it to be like a fucking, uh, can I say brand names on this thing? Doesn't matter. <laughs> Who cares? Does anyone yeah, give a shit? Yeah. Maybe you don't want an us. ice cold Budweiser. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah, because I guess with like imperial stouts and those types of beers, you actually want to taste the flavor. Like, because I I do beer ice cold, so I don't taste it very much. Yeah, that's all idea. You don't you don't you want to taste it because it's supposed to be you know good. Well, yeah, that's probably perfect to drink tonight because I think this is like the one of the top five like coldest days of of since I've been in Austin for like ten years. It's pretty fucking cold. It's fucking cold. It and it happened out of nowhere didn't it like I, it, the days were getting warmer i thought like okay that's all the cold that we got and no then there's drops again and we're getting we're there's like fear of snow happening here a, a palpable fear of snow <laughs> and like there's ice on the roads and shit and um yeah. dude it but it always happens this time of year it was my birthday recently and i was thinking about my birthday last year um and i think that's honestly the last time i actually one of the last times I like hung out with both of you guys was my birthday last year. Cause like the apocalypse happened like a few weeks afterwards. Huh. Isn't that, that's fucking crazy to think about. Like that's, it's been a full year. Um, yeah. That's messed up, man. I don't like that at all. No, <laughs> but what's, what, what's crazy is that, yeah, it's been a year since like we all basically have been able to hang out together. But in that year, Michael's a new dad. Yeah. 
I got a little little baby girl, and she's amazing and awesome, and uh, you know, yeah. And what's what's her favorite <laughs> Mortale song, Michael? Yeah. I'm sure that's basically the only thing you've been showing her is our band and our demos and deep cuts. Mm-hmm. Yeah, all of our cell phone recordings of our jams. Yeah, um, yeah, you've been showing her like the half hour jams, right? What's her favorite oh, half yeah. hour jam? Her favorite jam? Yeah. 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 It probably will be one I have saved on my phone as Beach Screech and in parentheses <laughs> Cephalopoid. <laughs> all right. Did that ever become an actual song? <laughs> no. <laughs> Only on my phone. Uh, dude, it would be so much fun to do a Mortalis lullaby record for your for your daughter. Ooh. No, I don't think it would. No, they... Just get, Lu- get Luis to do it. It'll be creepy and, and kind of cool. <laughs> Speaking of Luis, it's his birthday today. And uh, yeah. shout out to Luis, wherever you are. Happy birthday, bro. Happy birthday, buddy. He's going to be on an episode coming up also. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we don't know what ep- what album we're gonna do yet, but there's been talks about Limp Biscuit three dollar bill, y'all. <laughs> I can dig that. Just rumors. Right? Just rumors. Yeah, through That's the grapevine. That's a good one. I fucking love that album. <laughs> uh, but you Brent. know what? I think we have a different album to talk about today, don't we, Lucas? Yeah. What are we talking about today, Brett? I. You know what? I'd actually like Michael to introduce the album. Great idea. So the album that we have for today, tonight, whatever, um, is uh, it's Funeral Mariachi by Sun City Girls. I selected it, one, because it's a band I really like for a number of reasons. Um, they're really, well, <laughs> they're really, they're a really strange band Um, eclectic you could say sure (laughs) eccentric putting it very mildly very very mildly Uh, i guess um to give it a little bit of background to start with um for whoever's listening and they're not familiar with that with sun city girls they um they're two brothers alan and richard bishop and their friend Charles Gaucher, uh Junior, Senior, I don't remember, but uh doesn't matter. Um their friend, uh, who's the drummer of the band, um, they have a, a career that spans from the early eighties all the way to the uh mid to late two thousands. And uh they have like over 50 albums in, in their catalog or something like that, right? Their discography is ridiculous. It's like absurdly massive. They have a whole bunch of albums, cassettes, uh, videos, even like VHS shit. What? Yeah, they uh, said feature percent? length videos. What are feature length videos? Are those movies? I, I've never seen them myself. I've only seen like snippets and it's just like really – really weird just i don't know it's it's bizarre stuff um which i mean the band itself is a very bizarre band because yeah they have their roots in punk but they're not like what you would think as punk they like how to take that spirit and apply it to a whole spectrum of genres not just a, like american music but uh music from all over the world um I For know sure. that they're the two brothers. They uh, they travel still to this day rather extensively to all these uh, different countries. Um, one of them, I believe, it's Alan Bishop. He uh, runs a label um, called Sublime Frequencies, which uh, releases a whole bunch of basically like field recordings that he takes from just like all these different countries kind of documenting all these different like just cultural experiences a lot of the music primarily i think also just like just like ambient noise and just in like a city and whatnot just like various things kind of collecting the atmosphere of whatever locale that he's in 
That's cool. It's really interesting. How much of the Sun City Girls discography, like what percent would you say you've listened to, Michael? <laughs> uh, a very small amount comparatively. There, I mean, it, it, like I said, it's a massive discography. And uh, to kind of paraphrase uh, a quote from one of the members, I forget which one, but they were interviewed by somebody and they described their career their musical career is basically being like heaps of pterodactyl shit <laughs> that they left on the road but like a few uh little diamonds left here and there as well <laughs> this the album that we're talking about today if you know mariachi it's considered their most accessible album it, it is their most accessible by far yeah absolutely. at least of the ones you've heard <laughs> Yeah, which makes me really curious what their other shit sounds like because this is a like I guess you could say a challenging record to to listen to. Like it's very um non traditional in a sense of like things that you normally hear in Western music. I, right. Yeah. It's uh so they they too they take a lot of inspiration from uh I mean, just music all over the world, but a good portion of their albums um, have a serious bent towards uh, like Indonesian music, like Gamelan, for instance, is a big influence. But I mean, that's, you know, that's a small part of it. Like Kabuki Theater is another one, um, Chinese opera. Um, the two brothers, Alan and, uh, and Rick, they uh, both have Lebanese ancestry. Um, mm. And they also draw from that as well. Yeah, some of the music kind of reminded me of, um, and I hope I'm, I'm pronouncing it right, like Malawi music, like Eastern African kind of Malawi music. Like some of the songs reminded me of, and again, I probably am gonna fucking butcher this name, but uh, Mdu Mokhtar. Oh yeah, I love him, dude. Yeah, I I love him too. I just heard one of his albums recently, and some of these songs kind of gave me that vibe. Like the first song, um, Ben's Radio, kind of reminded <laughs> me of that Eastern African, um, you, you know, like notes and progressions and stuff that you wouldn't that aren't traditional in like Western music. Um, yeah, man, this was really interesting record, and I thought it was really cool that the first half and maybe not even the first half, but like the first third are, is very different than the rest of the album. Basically like the first third is very world music centric. Like you said, like a, a lot of middle Eastern influence and like East African influence and, and Asian. And then the second half or this, the last two thirds or whatever sounds so much like a fucking spaghetti Western, like a, a Ennio Marconi or something. Yeah. They, they even, um, they even actually cover an Ennio Morricone song on there. Um, I saw that. Madalena, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I just went on their Wikipedia and I saw that. I was like, dude, it totally sounds like some of the songs sound like it could be in like Django Unchanged or, or Unchained or like a <laughs> uh, or like a fucking Robert Rodriguez movie or something. Like really cool, moody spaghetti western music, and those were probably one of my favorite songs on the record. For sure, yeah. They were. It's very cinematic towards the end, in like a kind of a really mournful way, which is kind of fitting because, of, like we said earlier, it was the last album that they released, and yeah. part of the reason why it was their final album is because uh, a few months after they recorded it, their drummer Charles Gaucher he passed away from cancer, um, and you'll actually I don't know if it's meant to be interpreted this way or if it was kind of like open-ended like that but if you were to look at the album art you see like these two like kind of ghostly figures well really three there's three of them two of them are kind of close together and it looks like they're just mirror images of each other with yeah. a third one being kind of like off to the side and i always thought that was like kind of like a almost like a representation of like these three now like one of them's like separated from the other now man because they've often yeah. used the uh the title um or they have a song called it but um there's this phrase the brothers unconnected that they've used i think in reference to themselves and uh i don't know it kind of ties in with the album art and i think in kind of a weird way yeah when i when i read that part that kind of background on this album it 
it made me listen to it again with a different kind of ear. And um, because at first I just thought it's a a concept album, kind of like all funeral music, like things that you would play to, to mourn someone. And then I found out that it was that because they lost a member like months after this came out. So the dude might have known that it was kind of nearing the end. So the music that they wrote was a bit of a tribute to him. Yeah, I, I think it was definitely uh, premeditated for sure. Yeah, that's that's it makes it a lot more personal. So it kind of made me listen to it with a, uh, a more open mind because I'll be honest, dude, when that first song. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I I think they honestly made the first two songs the first two songs to try to weed people out, honestly. Right? Cause yeah, it, can you handle it? If not, get the fuck out. Honestly, I, mean, I when when you first introduced this album to us, and I listened to Ben's radio, I thought, okay. And I kind of was like, ah, all right, this is going to be something to get through. <laughs> but Ben's radio became one of my choice nucks. Uh, no kidding. No but shit. But then the M.A.M., <laughs> is like definitely my least favorite song solely because of that horn. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I've, oh, you're talking about like the little like birthday kazoo. The, yeah. Ah! Is that a kazoo? I, I, I guess. The thing that's like clipping the audio and like destroying my ears. I, I listened <laughs> to this album. Uh, Cause we'll, we'll talk about this a little more, but it was kind of a last minute suggestion. And I listened to this album about four times in the last two days. And I had to skip over like the first half of that song for like my last two listens. What the imam? Yeah, just because like I couldn't handle that little birthday <laughs> kazoo or whatever anymore. Dude, even more than the kazoo, the that um, that cheap sounding guitar that has that like rattly string, that was what kind of. I I kind of liked that. I liked the, the there were a lot of acoustic things on this album that I really liked the sound of. Yeah, a lot of good uh, auxiliary percussion. Yeah. Uh, uh, that's, yeah, I mean, <laughs> like, yeah, like I was saying, yeah, when the first song plays, it just has these vocals, man, that I just, I didn't, I wasn't expecting it, obviously. <laughs> and so I first thought, like, because cause you, when you suggested this album, you worded it in a way of, like, I wanted to switch things up a little bit or, like, mix things up a little bit. And I took that as, like, one of two ways, either – you thought like, all right, let me just introduce something that'll challenge them a little bit and like create a conversation. And cause obviously like the most of the songs we've talked about so far are albums that we like a lot already um, yeah. or discovered that we liked a lot. So it's been easy to talk about an album that you really dig. And then it's just like, all right, like that's what I thought you're either challenging us and giving us something that's a little bit off the wall and seeing how we react or you suggested this album to purposely give us something that was hard to listen to and <laughs> unenjoyable and, and then force us to talk about it. So I would have chosen a completely different album if that, if that was the case. I, I'm sure oh, he has wow. a lot of stuff under his belt that could fit that. And honestly, after, after uh, the second song, it, I think the album becomes a lot more accessible. You know, even, even after the first half of the second song. Yeah, you know? I totally agree. Definitely. Um, I mean, the first two songs on there are much more in the vein of what you would expect from Sound City Girls, um, oh, as far as their style. That that it's, but then like, yeah, like you said, like halfway through the the second song, it kind of like, like descends into this moody. Like this, really, just it's like it's a vibe. Like the whole the whole rest of the album just has like this 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 vibe to it, and it's super cool. Yep. It's kind of playful. It's kind of mournful. It's kind of trippy. I mean, it's yeah. just all these different things. Kind of jazzy. Like what well, I think the last, if I'm remembering correctly, like the last song, the title song, "Funeral Mariachi," it has almost this like. Miles Davisy like kind of vibe to it with the trumpet and the bass, yeah, yeah. The, and the the bass and the vocals are seeming like tandem, kind of playing the same thing together and layering over each other. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I I saw this description of the second song, Imam. That even the description is like, I I had to look up some of these words. So like, 
Uh, they described it as gorgeous John Fahey gone Middle Eastern finger pluck. That's okay. broken. And who's? Does anyone know who John Fahey is? Yeah, he's a, a acoustic guitarist um, from okay. the seventies, primarily, I believe. Um, I don't remember when exactly. He, excuse me about uh, <laughs> when exactly he died, um, but uh, yeah, um, he had a. I don't. I'm not super familiar with his entire career. I just know the name, and I, I've like heard snippets of what he's done he's very influ- influential in certain types of musicians um guys like richard bishop for sure the guitar player um and like a few other guys that i really enjoy doesn't it shouldn't surprise me that you know who john fay he is I, I would say that you have the most uh wide widely varied and like uh different taste in music of any other of my friends like you, you have such a, like you, you listen to so much music that I never would have heard of had you not shown it to me. I mean, you're I, welcome. I feel yeah. the same exact way that like <laughs> you have the widest scope and like the most dynamic tastes. And I remember there was one time I asked you for some album recommendations and you'd just sent me just a whole list of stuff, all completely different. You sent me like, uh, psychedelic porn crumpets, which is a band that I'm really into right now. Hell They're yeah, awesome. man! Uh, they just released some new stuff too. You also sent me some bullshit, so but I don't remember. <laughs> Probably, what it was. it's I okay. Mean, I asked Michael I, I get for it. metal. Yeah, I asked Michael for metal recommendations last year, and he sent me a list of like 20, 30 albums. I'm just like, you just you're you know this shit, man. And I I feel like did you just sit around and listen to music all the time, or was this something that did you purposefully go and like explore and look for you know, Turkish folk music and, you know, Malawi music and stuff like that. Like, how did you even find this type of stuff? Like, this is stuff that a lot of people will, will never hear in their life. I mean, I don't know. It's, I've always, I feel like, like, it's, a, I think it started like mostly in my early 20s um, when I was still living in Houston before I moved here to Austin. Um, I just had like this like this hunger for something else, but I couldn't figure out what exactly it was. Um, but then I just started to discover slowly like these different bands. And once I started researching more about these bands, it just sort of led to a rabbit hole. And um, one of the biggest thing, one of the things I used to do a lot um, about 10 years ago or so is I used to go on to these, all these different blogs and, well, pirate on, a bunch on the, of music, on like the really. forums. Forums. I mean, you name it. I just all these like different blogs and forums, and I would just start like just like combing them, just looking for like, okay, maybe this will be like the next album that like just completely cracks my brain open. And yeah. uh, in the process, I mean, some of it was great, some of it was okay, and some of it was just like, ah, eh, whatever. I don't care about this, but. Um, I mean, in the process, I just ended up kind of picking up some stuff here and there. And then, you know, other people I'd meet. Actually, it was Luis who uh, introduced me to Sun City Girls initially, which is how I came to find out about them. Um, wow. That, all, yeah. I, that makes sense to me. Yeah, that definitely. <laughs> that, that, uh, that tracks <laughs> for sure. Uh, do you, would you like consider yourself, would you have considered yourself more of a metalhead before you started finding all that stuff? Because you also like have. You uh, you know you you love metal a lot too. When I was a teenager, and up until really up until like my early like very early twenties, I was definitely a huge metalhead. Um, kind of in a weird way, like I I used to go to this forum called uh, Metal Rules dot com. <laughs> with a Z it sounds epic. No, not with a Z. Um, oh, missed opportunity. <laughs> But uh, I used to go to the, to the forum at, at this website a lot and uh, kind of had like a very – like you, you'd, I would like kind of like read all these threads and there would be a number of members there who had these uh, very like scholarly, very like well thought out like opinions about metal and music in general. And that was kind of an influence on me at that time. So like in the process, I ended up like – 
you know, really getting into like all the classic metal and like uh, went into doom metal and uh, I used to be really into 90s death metal for a while. Um, hmm. Kind of had like this a sort of like a rosy colored view of like, oh, all the best stuff was like before now, all this like, you know, you know, there's only like a handful of like good bands now. Yeah, Most yeah, of what's yeah. like modern is, you know, crap, whatever. I mean, which, you know, is a dumb way of thinking in retrospect, but I mean, that's that's just what I was into at the time. Um, I have a much I have a I definitely appreciate some other stuff I kind of poo-pooed back in the day more now, but uh, I mean, I'm just now getting into like thrash, which I used to always shit on. And now I'm really loving it. That's a damn shame. Strash I, is awesome. I feel like I wasted time not liking it. <laughs> like I'm just like now I'm 34 and I'm just like, ah, I wish I would have gotten into thrash before 34. Let me, can I, can I ask y'all, did y'all ever have like a phase where you were like, if it, if, if this music doesn't have a guitar, then it's automatically not good. Did, um, did y'all ever more <laughs> in high school? Because, like, it took me a long time before I started to really delve into, like, hip-hop or anything like that. Mm. Um, or, well, just any kind of music that didn't have a guitar. Uh, I love, I fucking love hip-hop now. Um, a lot would... of it has to do with uh, with uh, Katie, uh, my, oh. uh, my wife. Really? She, she's, yeah. she's a hip-hop head? Oh, she loves hip-hop. Oh, yeah, shit. absolutely. That's cool, man. Like I the would Travis say... Scott and Juice World and No, she's not into that. <laughs> yeah, me neither. <laughs> that's the that's the new hip hop I can't get into. Um but I would I would say that hip hop is probably my my biggest um the thing I listen to the most. But uh dude, I mean I can't even think of music that didn't have guitar. What music doesn't have guitar except hip hop? Uh just like pop in general, I guess. A lot of pop. Yeah, I would say it's taken me it took me up until like my late twenties to start giving pop music a chance. I thought it was yeah. all cookie cutter bullshit and bubblegum commercials and toothpaste fucking ads and I hated it. <laughs> and uh, man, it took me once I started appreciating eighties um pop music, that kinda opened up the door for me. And then I realized when I was growing up, I was like, dude, I loved all the fucking nineties dance hits too, just when I was younger, but I just <laughs> didn't you know, I didn't know that it was that was considered pop music. Y- y- yeah. Yeah, because like you grew up in you grew up into it, right? Yeah, like, it was. You, it's like, oh, that was just normal. Yeah, that was just on the radio. I like, yeah, I love all that shit. The oh man, yeah, I and I love that shit now. But I'm totally like still in the mindset that the best music came out in the '90s and before. Like, I still, I still stand by that. Wow. Okay, old head. Okay, well, I mean, I I can... 90s was a pretty dope era of music, Fuck and yeah. that could also be like my own nostalgia speaking to it. But I don't know if it's the best. I will concede that. I don't. I don't know if it's the best. I, what do you I, think I... is the best decade of music, Michael? Right now, I think do right it. now, honestly. Uh... Wait, you're saying Just right be... now is the best decade of music? Oh, like the best decade? Yeah, yeah. like the best ten years. Yeah. I mean, we're only like one year into it, aren't we? <laughs> yeah. It's a, it's a pretty new decade. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I mean, there's been some fantastic music the past 10 years. And uh, I think, uh, I mean, it could also just be because we have such an unprecedented, we have such unprecedented access to music that like yeah. you can really just kind of tailor your music experience to whatever it is you want. Yeah. It, a matter of minutes. Like, I mean, there really is something for everyone and you can do it. I mean, it's just so easy. It's, I mean, it's, I'm at a computer right now. It's right there. Dude. Yeah. yeah it was, it was when I started um, getting into Spotify, it was overwhelming how much there, <laughs> there was available to me. And it really was intimidating. I'm just like, I, I, I was like just listening to the same shit that I used to listen to. And I'm like, cool. I don't have to listen to Rancid on my iPod anymore. Now I got it on my fucking computer. <laughs> like, that's cool. Um, but it really is intimidating. I had a friend who he only had an iPod Nano. And he put in however many songs you can fit in an iPod Nano. And that was the only music he ever listened to. He didn't like Spotify because he thought 
it's it was too much for him. He was like, I just want to listen to what is familiar to me and what I already know. So this dude had whatever you can fit on a nano, what two hundred songs or something? Maybe, maybe, <laughs> and, and and that's all he listened to. It was like he was too it was too much for him to take in. And now I fucking love Spotify. Like that listening to the album of the day last year, where every day I just listen to something I never heard before. Like I couldn't do that without Spotify. And it's exposed me to a lot of shit music, but also a lot of music that I fucking love now. Some of my favorite songs were from albums I listened to in the last year. Yeah, well, it's, it's you know, even with all the crap music you find, it's worth it for the good stuff that you never would have found before. And there's things like Discover Weekly on Spotify and uh, Obscurify, which my friend uses, and other stuff like that that introduces you to new stuff you might like that's like it's beautiful yeah you know the spotify recommendations are pretty fucking on point they're pretty good uh hey spotify if you want to fucking sponsor us <laughs> yeah if you want <laughs> if you want us to uh you know talk more good about you yeah we're really selling it right now uh yeah for just $9 a month. <laughs> before we get too Here far you go. The here's album. a fraction of a cent there, there's your there's yeah. your con- recommendations. <laughs> fucking stipend uh before we get into the album, Michael, you originally chose uh, John Frusci- Frusciante. Frusciante. <laughs> you, you chose like the Empyrean. And I want to know why you switched it up. Um, He's like, it's too easy. No, not necessarily. <laughs> uh, I mean, it is an album that I do love and hold very dear to my heart for a number of reasons. Um, I just... I think I just I wanted to hear what y'all thought of this album and I thought it'd be like really interesting just to get y'all's personal take like knowing the two of y'all and what y'all's <laughs> bins are musically uh, so I just listening to like the like the podcast that y'all like the other episodes y'all done for this podcast um uh, you know I, which are great by the way I really enjoy listening to oh them. thanks man um, Thank you. I don't know. It's just so candid, and I love it. Um, I mean, it's I seriously it just feels like I'm just hanging out with you guys, and it's weird because like it's just a recording of you guys. So I can't be like, "Hey, y'all." Oh wait, no, no, never mind. Yeah, that's awesome because I wanted it to be like it's like how we all would talk about music during band practice. You know, like that's yeah. how I wanted it to feel. That it's just like just say whatever you want to say and fucking you know don't hold back. And it's, uh, it's been really fun. So like, yeah, so you've been listening to the episodes and you thought maybe we, um, we should mix it up a bit. I just, I just felt like I had to bring it. Like I felt <laughs> you, well, in a way you brought it. that the Empyrean <laughs> yeah. was a little too safe, even though it's not, it's not a safe record. There's plenty to, to talk about it. Um, there are well, plenty to talk about, but I'll, I'll tell you, Michael, I enjoyed this one a lot more than the Empyrean. Like really? I, I really enjoyed this album, cool. a lot more than I thought it would, at least. <laughs> yeah, this really grew on me a lot. Like, uh, I will admit, even after listening to it the first time, I was just like, I was a little upset. <laughs> but then, uh, <laughs> but then, you know, obviously, like we do multiple listens, and I and I wanted to really give it an honest shot because it's, I mean, yeah, and first, the first impression, like just the way it started, I was just like, okay, this is this is going to be tough. And, um, and then, yeah, as the album plays out, it gets a lot. It's, it's very like eerie, but beautiful. And Mm. it's, it's very, um, quiet music. Most of the time, it's like something that isn't going to be like harsh on the ears, except for that fucking kazoo. Um, (laughs) and it's, and it definitely like, it's, it's very beautiful and, and creepy and eerie and trippy. Like you said, like there's, there's a lot going on and, and, as the album plays out, it honestly got, gets better and better for me. Like, and, and the, since listening to it, you know, after the first time, yeah, I definitely had like a, a, a stronger appreciation for it, whether it's like something that I would jam all the time or not. It was like, I definitely understood why you picked it. And I, I'm glad that you did. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it's a, it's a very beautiful album. Yeah. yeah production wise too. It's it's really nice to listen to. Yeah. Ex- like ag- again, except for that fucking kazoo and that fucking <laughs> rattly ass guitar on. Uh, I think it's on. This is my name. That rattly ass guitar, 
And that's one of my choice nugs, even though that fucking guitar drove me crazy. Really? Let's <laughs> maybe maybe we just ought to get into the choice nugs and uh, we'll see how how spread out we are. Yeah, Michael, what what are your uh, what are your two choice nugs? Like your favorite two songs on this album? I'm still deciding. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I've I've you... been thinking about it for a while now, and it's really hard for me to choose because there's so many songs on that album that i really 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 like um do you want do you want us to go first and maybe that'll like kind of guide you where you're going no i think i i think i narrowed it down and it's kind of arbitrary because i mean for me like just because i mean i might as well just pick them at random really just because i think like there's nothing really Except for, like, maybe some of the songs, like, towards the end of the album, like, for the most part, like, all the songs are almost on equal footing to me for different reasons. Wow. Um, so I would choose, and you're going to hate me for this one, Brett, uh, The Imam. As really? Well, my you? Of course. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. <sighs> Come on, man. Tell me that, tell me the vocal in the middle of that song isn't just awesome. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. My it's ears are always blown out by that point. <laughs> um, so that one, because um, it's like the most Sun City Girls out of all of them. Um, but then the second one uh, would probably be Holy Ground, I think. Really? Yeah. And that's a, I believe that's like the one of two songs that they sing in English. If I'm not mistaken? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of um, foreign language lyrics in this uh, album, and I, I wish I could find out what language it, it is. I I looked just about, I mean, I Googled, right? But, like, I couldn't find the lyrics for these songs anywhere. No, same here. And even even the lyrics that I could understand, I couldn't decipher, <laughs> like, <laughs> any, any kind of meaning or anything, because it's kind of a a very I don't know like weird way to do lyrics (laughs) I mean the lyrics for like this is my name for instance which is a a, like a hair not my one of my choice nugs Um, those are some weird lyrics like I think one of one of the lines is like when I was dead I looked exactly like you now I'm alive where nothing is true which is like cryptic as fuck. But yeah, I think it's, it's all super like cool. it's all. It all seems very cryptic and very w- off the wall and like enigmatic. Uh, I wrote down but, that line when I was dead. I looked exactly like you. I loved that. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it's just I don't know. It's creepy, but it's like in the context of the song, it's like oddly beautiful too. I don't know. It's just it can you can take it so many different ways. Yeah, I think, um, and you said "Holy Ground" is one of your is one of your choice nugs. Yeah, that one has like very cool spaghetti western vibes, but almost like the bass almost it, it could almost sound like the beginning of a Soundgarden song or something. <laughs> like it's it almost sounds like the beginning of like kind of a darker grunge '90s track. It's now I'm trying to remember how it begins. Uh, it's, it's very beautiful i love the uh the kind of vocals that are throughout it ambient it's it's very ambient song yeah a lot of oohs and ahs a lot of uh... yeah and the way that he sings i don't know if y'all have heard dan deacon before no. he's a electronic artist no. he does that kind of monotone delivery yeah in a lot of his songs and that's kind of how the, this guy sings on this track and I really, I really liked it. And the lyrics are awesome. Despite me not knowing what the fuck he's talking about. <laughs> I still like the lyrics, but yeah. in the, in the guitar tone, the, that little like lead guitar tone in the background reminded me a lot of like David Gilmore's guitar tone that he uses the, the guy from Pink Floyd. Yeah. I really, I, I dug that a lot. I, I think Holy ground was in kind of competition for a, a one of my choice nugs with um, this is my name. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, this is my name has more of like that Middle Eastern 
vibe a little bit. Um, and they have this really cool, like electric organ playing like during the bridge. It almost sounds like a, like a really creepy seventies, like horror score. Yeah. Um, and you, yeah, you nailed sure. it. Dude. Like, yeah. Kind of like really like a weird bell, like kind of sound to it. And you nailed it. How, how that this is album, like cinematic is, is probably the best way to describe it. Especially like the the after the first couple songs, it just becomes like a, a movie score. It sounds like, yeah, yeah. One of the songs is actually from a movie score. Actually, I think it was a Harmony Corinne movie. I don't remember the ta- the name of it, but uh, it was Vine Street Piano was um, was used for it. But it was a different it was a different version of that song. Uh, it didn't have a whole lot of the bells and whistles that this version has. Yeah, that one's just a, a instrumental. Yeah, yeah. The only yeah. note I wrote for that one was shrug. Oh R- damn! Really? <laughs> Here's the thing, man. Yeah, I didn't really. That's like my it. second choice nug. Oh. Yep. You're a good man. Yep. You're a good man. Here's the thing. Me look I, bad. I hardly ever care about instrumentals, right? For some reason, like I, I you know, it's just because I'm a gorilla, I guess. Yeah, you're a fucking Neanderthal. Uh, and like there, there were. A couple times when I was listening to this album, I was like, this is probably my choice, Nug. I thought maybe uh, Black Orchid, and then I was like, no, maybe El Solo. Uh, maybe Funeral Mariachi. Like, it was kind of between a lot of, but I landed on uh, Ben's Radio and Vine Street Piano, and I just <laughs> love the, the, just the beauty of Vine Street Piano, and it's very kind of calm, like you're walking down a, a nice rainy road, you know? And yeah. you're enjoying splashing in the puddles or something. Yeah, it almost yeah. sounds like an innocent song, right? Like this, like you know, almost like a like the slice of life, uh, or what do you call it? Like um, you know, those movies where people are fucking teenagers and they go through like these amazing experiences. And um, God damn it, what's the term? I mean, slice of life is something. Yeah, sure. Fuck it. Slice of life. Yeah, it just sounds like, you know, this. it sounds like a very sweet song, Fine Street Piano. And I, I really liked how the piano sounded on this album, uh, which sound- is why I almost chose El Solo, just because of that, like, I love even that. Even though it sounds so line. out of place. It's, it, to me, it sounded like a piano from, like, 1830, like a fucking watering hole, you know, like a bar room piano <laughs> from, like, the 1800s. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, that was yeah. Vine Street Piano. I mean, I wrote Shrug. When I'm listening to it now, it's fine. <laughs> and what to was your? That... Uh, oh, sorry. Go ahead. What was so you said your choice nugs were? Uh, this is my name, and what else, Lucas? Uh, dude, I also had the same struggle with trying to figure out which choice nug was mine because. It's weird because I, I think I'd like the album more as it plays out. So like the later songs, I think I liked a little bit more, yeah. but you know, black orchid was the first one that that's where the, the tone kind of shifted on the album uh-huh. and black orchid had this, like, you know, kind of bring it back. What we were saying earlier, like very eerie kind of creepy sound, but it's beautiful at the same time. And I loved like the female vocals during the little interludes I thought it was like really haunting and beautiful. I think it had some of my favorite vocals were on Black Orchid. Yeah, I really Black Orchid definitely brought it started bringing the spaghetti western vibes a little more. And even then like it's I don't know what fucking language you're speaking. And it's weird. <laughs> it's a weird fucking song. Like I feel like, like this would have been like one of those like this sounds like a song that could have been uh, like one of those bands in the 70s that ended up being a cult. <laughs> you know i mean at michael is sun city girls a cult yes or no i seriously doubt it mm-hmm. i think they're too stubborn and way too uh just way way too assholeish and pranksterish <laughs> to be in a cult they could be the leader of a cult maybe possibly <laughs> but they <laughs> i don't know yeah I, black, black I, work I, I couldn't see it I, I I really liked Black Orchid a lot. That the ladies' vocals are just so cool and and yeah, it's it's, it's creepy. It it makes me feel a little like <laughs> uneasy, 
but in a in a great way because it's like also like you know bringing that back that the production is just so good on this that it's it uh you can at least appreciate it in the sense of sonically it sounds great like in the ear you know so it's i think um black orchid and i went back and forth between black orchid this is my name and blue west <laughs> yep i blue west is probably the most uh western song on here if i remember correctly for sure so it makes sense that you would choose that i i just think it's wild that we all chose different songs not one of us like shares a a choice nug yeah it kind of tells you like how much this album like differs song to song you know there's only 11 tracks yeah (laughs) you know it it, it, it's weird but yeah blue west sounds like just a quintessential spaghetti western song it has that yeah that iconic guitar and yeah how do you even how do you get that tone and how did when did that become the Ask fucking Sheever, spaghetti man. western tone yeah <laughs> for, for real though was that marconi that that started that sound was that like all uh, him i don't know I, I i really don't know enough about his music to really comment because i didn't really grow up on westerns i really didn't like get into any of that stuff i still there's still like a a bajillion like classics that i've never watched you know Uh, it's just i know the name just because like when you think of a genre of music like he's the godfather of like an entire genre of music so (laughs) his name is it's hard to miss you know yeah you can't you can't help but not but you can't help but be exposed to him i guess yeah tarantino even used i don't know if it was unreleased stuff or if it was because I think Marconi died a, a while ago, but Tarantino used um, his music for Hateful Eight. And that was partly why I loved Hateful Eight. A big reason why I loved Hateful Eight. A big reason why I love a lot of Quentin Tarantino movies is the music. Hmm. And uh, yeah, Blue West just sounded like something, you know, that I'd hear in, you know, those old spaghetti westerns. I grew up watching them. So like I have this, like my dad is really into Clint Eastwood movies and westerns and stuff. And, you know, he's an old stoner, so he fucking loves those movies and just like vibes out to them. And then, and the music is a big part of it for him too. And I, I love that quintessential little like distorted, trebly twangy fucking guitar that's used on these on the, that type of music. <laughs> and is that a saxophone at one point in Blue West? There's like something that sounds like a saxophone. A saxophone. Yeah, and I... it probably isn't. A saxophone? I don't know. I don't know. I'd have to play it back and listen to it because I always, I always like pick out at least a little something new every time I re-listen to that album. Sure. Yeah. It, they have a surprising amount of layers that you don't really, you don't really, you aren't really smart to the first time you listen. It it sounds a lot more minimal than it is, which is weird. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I mean that's like yeah, it, it's night and day from my the first time listening to it to the the other times after that. Like night and day with the, how my reception was to it and how much I appreciated it. Um, and again, I mean it's probably not going to be something I I dip back into except those choice nuggies. But I like those choice nugs a lot. <laughs> And I wonder, like, while they're playing that, like, you know, the the acoustic guitars, like the Spanish guitar stuff, like. Uh, I just saw a picture today of these guys playing classical guitars and they have this, like these adorable little like footstools that they use to like have their knee up while they're playing. Yeah. And I just, I, I really hope they use those while they're recording this album. Uh, he does. Yeah. I actually did <laughs> see yeah. Richard. I actually have, I've seen Richard Bishop uh, uh, play live once. He played at the now defunct uh, Barracuda here in Austin, RIP. Um, but I got to see him play. It was actually one of the, it was a side stage. So like, he was like pretty close up to the crowd. And, uh, so his solo stuff is complete, is very different, uh, from most Sun City Girls stuff. Like there's a little bit of bleed in some aspects, but his stuff is much more like classical, like classical guitar, like based, um, 
very very virtuosic super cool um uh but he did play at least one sun city girls song um because of course he had to um well yeah yeah uh it was a uh (laughs) i can't think of the title of it right now but it's an ode to um let's say very late term abortions let's put it that way jesus christ (laughs) okay Cool. Extremely, extremely late. So kind of like a giddy kind of poppy song. So infanticide? <laughs> I mean, you know, it's up to interpretation. Wow. Uh, it, it's, it's, inten- it's intentionally in poor taste. I mean, that's just kind of sure. their MO. Is yeah. It's just being just, just – <laughs> being the complete opposite of politically correct. Um for a lot of their their lyrics Man, i'm um, super curious what their other stuff sounds like like i i have to kind of dip into their top 10 on spotify or something like that and just that's probably how i'll, I'll go about uh seeing their other stuff as well yeah the, i mean the top songs on spotify are all some of their best songs so it's nothing like too outlandish um but uh, it's really good stuff really really good stuff so um, I, I forget where I was going with that, though. I feel like there was a point I was trying to reach. Oh, we were talking about those little stools, those little footstools. <laughs> that we, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And he, so, he was, he can't confirm, one. he uses a footstool. Okay, yes. thank you. See, that's why, we got, <laughs> that's why we got you on this episode, Michael. You're our guy on the inside. You get all the info that we need. Yeah, you got the, the, the fucking juice, that and hot I, goss. I want to transition to a segment that Lucas made. Uh, where you we <laughs> take the album, think of the album, Uh-oh. and you describe it as a food. Can we pause on that for a second? I had a question for you, Brett. Oh yeah, sure. Um, I so what were your choice nugs again? I know Ben's radio is one of them. What was the second one? Uh, the second one the Imam. was Vine Street Piano. <laughs> okay. So you talked a little bit about Vine Street Piano. I want to know why you chose Ben's Radio cuz that that surprises the fuck out of me. Fucking me too. It you know it might be Stockholm syndrome. Uh, <laughs> because I did listen to this album four or five times and the intro to Ben's Radio is probably the thing that sticks in your head the most, right? you know and eventually yeah yeah and i like i i do kind of love crazy vocal stuff like that like they pan stuff to the left and to the right and they're just like saying whatever and like i don't know what language they're speaking and i don't i don't know what they're saying but like it's kind of off the wall and i would say it's probably their most like you know quote unquote rock song on the album yeah it's it's got a little more energy than the other songs and like in the middle and it just kind of goes in a lot of kind of weird places well you just made it into a king Gizzard song crazy guitar solo in the middle evil evil <laughs> it's like Rangda, Rangda. It's kind of iconic in my head now. And then there, Ben's radio. Yeah. It's just like someone's like just like flipping through a bunch of channels, right? Yes. Yeah. Hundred that's, percent. That's how I interpreted it. Yeah. <laughs> totally. Wow, it's super cool. Yeah. Super so that cool was to me. Yeah. Someone it described was, this album yeah. as pan global acoustic scronk. <laughs> the fuck is Skronk? It's whatever you want it to be, man. <laughs> Isn't that a character from Emperor's New Groove? Skronk. <laughs> Skronk. Skronk. Noun. Yeah, Popular a, music of enough. a kind that is experimental and deliberately discordant. Oh, yep. Yep, that sounds what, about right. Is that what they? Is that Urban Dictionary? Is that what they said? No, that's fucking Webster's.com. Webster's. Wow. It's a real hip. word. Oh no, Oxford. Oh, uh, excuse me, Oxford. Oh my. Popular, so yeah. Mind. Experimental and deliberately discordant. That's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> That's perfect. Um, yeah, man, I'm really surprised Ben's radio is is one of your choice nugs. That it was. I mean, it was it was weird because like for I knew the whole time that Vine Street Piano would be it, 
and it just it just like switched between a bunch of songs like i i really liked el solo for some yeah. reason i liked the those piano parts and kind of the yeah. minimalist nature i really liked the horns on funeral mariachi mm. or the horn i guess and that like it was really close it was it basically a last second decision you know yeah. i listened yeah, to this album hard. like it's two hard. or three times today and each time i listened to it my choice nug for that slot changed <laughs> yeah even now that we're talking about it i think i'm changing my my choice nug i i'm really with, yeah I, i'm sticking with black orchid i really love that song but i think blue west is my other one because this is my name was what i had written down but i you know listening back to blue west i'm just like no this is like the the spaghetti western song on the album i'm like this is that's definitely one of my nugs sheesh we're, yeah. we're, we're coming in with some last second buzzer beaters here i mean y'all are fucking i i went into this not expecting it to you know give it like a rave review but talking through it i'm just like ah oh, shit i did like this a lot more than i thought <laughs> that's the thing about this band is they kind of get under your skin and sometimes it's in a really bad way but then there's like those songs where it's like it's really really fucking good and that's part of why i love them so much yeah it definitely is gonna probably grow on me and i mean fuck it i'll give ben's radio another chance Jute, just just give it another here's the thing is that like i can only think of that intro part to ben's radio right now like i can't get <laughs> yeah. it out of my head i'm sure it's gonna be my anti-choice nug in a week <laughs> we should do a cover of that and norma sings that song she sings that part for us that'd be hilarious <laughs> uh, but... <laughs> she could probably pull it off i'm sure she could um so brett you wanted to do the the what food is it <laughs> I would yes, I what would food? love because I have no idea what you're gonna pull out, Lucas. Uh, uh, it's it's hard. It was hard. I tried thinking of one for this, and I might need a little help because I was trying to think of something that um, up front, like taste, um, like you want to spit it out, and then the more you chew on it, and the more you eat it, like the more you keep eating it, it gets better as you eat it. Maybe uh, like maybe a Cajun bowl. Something that smells nasty, but you get into it and you kind of figure it out. What kind of terrible Cajun food have you eaten yeah, in your ca- life? Cajun you food you, smells terrible. Y'all, yeah. the good Cajun food smells like shit. Uh, that's the truth. My experience. That's the truth. My my Lily is from Louisiana, and her parents are from Louisiana, and they make that Cajun food that smells like trash. Spell Louisiana. Is it but northern it Louisiana? Like gold. Where in Louisiana are they from? I don't know. I never asked. It sounds like some <laughs> north of I-10 bullshit. Yeah. They're straight from the swamp, man. They're straight from the bayou there. They're like, <laughs> we got a little bit of the alligator sweat that we put on there. <laughs> That's not a Louisiana accent. I don't know how to do one. Yeah, because <laughs> Kate it doesn't you get some of that gumbo, dude. Katie's from Louisiana, and I'm sure she would disagree. That it smells I'm, like shit up front. Maybe y'all never had real Louisiana food. Hmm? Ooh, yeah, yeah, the, the 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 fake Louisiana food we had in Lake Charles. Yeah, I had etouffee. <laughs> yeah, etouffee, <laughs> gumbo, and jambalaya, and oh, that sounds so good. I've already eaten dinner. Shrimp Creole. Let's eat second dinner. And go get some fucking. Have y'all been in Evangel- Evangeline Cafe in Austin? Yeah, pretty good. Pretty good, pretty man. Fucking choice, yeah. Have you have you been to Bo's? No, never heard it's, of it. It's it's a food truck in Buda. The some of the best food I've had in my entire life. Shit. It's there's like this one thing called like the something train, or oh uh, train. It's it's the like the train? something train, and it's like twenty dollars, right? But it's. Uh, every single bite is literally euphoric it it like it's making me friggin like salivate just thinking about it it's so good i'm 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 just like nutting over here uh 
Damn, dude. I literally can't think of like what food this album is. Like I, I can't think of anything that that gets better as you eat it but tastes really bad at first. Michael, what do you have a take on this? Uh you're really putting me on the spot here. I was not prepared for this segment. <laughs> I was pretty unprepared too, man. I thought about it all day and I couldn't think of anything. And I, I fucking came up with this segment. I don't <laughs> associate any kind of food with this album. To me, like the whole vibe I get is I mean is it's just it has nothing to do with food. You know, if anything, it's almost like an absence of needing to eat anymore cuz <laughs> you're spirit is separating from your body and then you remember all the things in your life all the beautiful stuff and all the <laughs> I think I think my answer you know, is and this is a cuisine I never had before so I'm totally winging it but I think it kind of applies to this a little bit is I'm going to say Ethiopian food because okay. I know that food is very challenging on the palate I know there's like raw meats involved and like weird spongy kind of gooey breads involved and all these different. Yeah, teff bread. Yeah, I know there's a lot of things that are pretty challenging on people's palates, um, but I've heard it's delicious. So I'm going to say Ethiopian food. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, there we go. Uh, And we need to give our ratings, y'all, our ratings of the album. Michael, the, the special guest, the special boy. You go first, man. What would you rate this out of 10? Uh, so I reject your rating system, first of all. Uh, <laughs> okay. I am more of a wow. five-star right. person myself because uh, I think 10 is just way too much and is kind of ridiculous. Uh, <laughs> uh, 10 ridiculous. A little ridiculous. All right, fine. Uh, one, at, one to eight. Because, I mean, Big honestly, guy. once you go below a seven, what's even the point? Right. Uh, well, we we take yeah. our rating well, okay, system a, a little more seriously here. Okay, yeah. we're a little more critical with our stuff. All yeah. right. You're not following the prototype, Michael. I would give it a solid four out of five. So an eight out of ten. Okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> well, five is too I much. Would, I, would I don't say, know. All right, fine. If you're gonna do a, do a little fraction there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> then let's say nine out of ten. How about that? I feel like it. Yeah, sure. <laughs> it's. I, I I fucking love this album. It's it's amazing. Um, it's not my favorite Sun City Girls album, but it's definitely it's pro- it's easily my second favorite out of everything of theirs I've ever heard. Um, and, um, but it's it's hard because, like I said, like every album that they've ever released is just so radically different from another that like to even try to compare one to the next is almost right. like pointless <laughs> yeah yeah because they're so <laughs> fucking different like comparing apples to fucking steak yeah exactly yeah uh, that's well that's a perfect but steak is like objectively better than apples uh have you ever so had a honey crisp? But apples are better for you yeah have you ever had a honey crisp in season that shit is fucking delicious brett but I've, I'm going to I'm gonna give my rating because um, the reason that I like to do uh, 1 to 10 or 0 to 10 or whatever is because it gives me a little more, like, wiggle room and trying to, like, if I liked it but I'm probably not going to go back to it, it would probably land somewhere in a 5 or a 6. And then everything below that is, like, I didn't enjoy it, but I can maybe appreciate it, you know, like, 3, 4. I can understand, like, you know, the writing that went into it and blah, blah, blah. Um, but for this one, I mean, I came into this thinking I was going to give this like a three point something out of 10, um, despite really enjoying those two or three choice nugs that I had, I was just overall, I didn't think I was going to rate it that highly. And then talking through it and y'all influenced me and you have sold me on things. I hear your passion. I hear how much you guys like this shit and you kind of sold me on it a little bit. So I, I'm going to give it a 6.4 out of 10. A 6.4. Which for me... Why not a 6.5? I mean, if it was a 6.5, we'd have to take out... What keeps it from being a 6.5? <laughs> or a 6.3? Listen, he's done, he's done multiple calculations. Yep. He has a TI-84 right on his right hand. Yeah. 
that he's been doing this stuff on. He has a system. By now, okay. I've done almost 400 album reviews in the last year and a half or year and, and, it, and some change. So, like, these, those numbers mean something to me, but they're hard to put in words. <laughs> so, like, a 6.4 to me is there was a lot that I liked a lot, but there was enough in there that, that I'm probably not going to go back and listen to. So it was, it's, you know, it's I, what I liked, I liked a lot. And what I didn't, I really didn't like. So it was like, you know, plus the appreciation of like the backstory on the album, all that stuff. It, it went up, I mean, it went up from a three point something to a six point something. Like that's a huge jump for me. And it was <laughs> yeah. just from talking with you guys through it. Like you, yeah, you fucking changed my mind. Uh, I'm, I'm giving it a six. Just a, just a nice, clean six. Wait, I'm rating it higher than you? Yeah, I guess. Hmm, that doesn't sound right. I think Look, you like this more than I Music is subjective, boy. <laughs> yeah, but you liked this, I think, more than I did. Yeah, but, you know. Your ratings are... <laughs> yeah, you know. You have no logic. Maybe maybe your ratings are whack. Uh, let's just drop the ratings altogether. What have I done? <laughs> <laughs> you know what? <laughs> this is it. All right. Yeah, we're ear foes. Ear foes. <laughs> Officially. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Dance, monkeys. Dance. <laughs> well, Michael, thank you so much for coming on our podcast. For real. It's, it's You are our first guest. Uh, and thank you for picking out this album for us, man. It's my pleasure. Let's do this again sometime. Yeah, man. For sure. Anytime. I'll pick yeah. something a little, a little different. Yeah, I mean, I'll I'll never know what to expect uh, from you, so it's it's always yes, gonna be a surprise, and it's always gonna be fresh to us. Um, but you were you were a great guest, man, and thank you for taking time to do this, and it was super fun, man. We're super happy that you are our first guest on this podcast. Thanks, y'all. Go uh, go uh, drink a couple more beers because I'm cold, so drink some for me. I will. <laughs> it constricts the blood vessels so good. <laughs> what would you, what would uh what would you rate this episode, Brett? Uh, you know what? With my with my good buddy Michael, I'm gonna rate this an eight point five. Wow. Yep. I'm the point five. Yeah, you. Both That's right. Up. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I'm gonna give it an eight point six. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. You're just gonna one up me, huh? Yep. And I'm gonna give my my performance an eight point seven. Michael, what would you give this episode? One. Oh, solid, <laughs> solid. I would give one out of this. one though, right? One out of one. It's the only option, right? Unless there's an absence, in which case, uh, I mean, then you have to consider the ramifications there. Does the absence mean that we're all dead or does it just mean that it just sucks so much that it didn't even register, you know? Yeah. This might not even come out. <laughs> I wasn't. Oh, come on, guy. What? What did I say? <laughs> I don't know, you're getting too existential over here. Oh, how much would it suck to find out that we weren't recording? That's always like the biggest fear of mine. Oh my God. Has that I, happened yet? Thank fucking Christ, no. <laughs> I always have a fear that we're going to stop the recording and I'm just going to like accidentally delete my thing. Yeah, dude. Oh my God. <laughs> um, well, I'm still recording. I, 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 y'all made me look. I had to look. <laughs> dude, I look every five minutes. <laughs> I am so paranoid. Um, well, uh, next week, what are we going to be talking about, Brett? Because I, I already forgot. We are talking, sir, about the Drips uh, with their album uh, Drip, uh, I yes. believe, or Drips. I think it's Drips. Yes, the Drips. Super group. People from Social Distortion, Suicide Machines, the Distillers, the Bronx, a bunch of punk bands coming together and making a fucking phenomenal punk record. That, um, I'm super stoked to get into it. Yeah, it's a one and done, man. It's the only thing they're ever going to do, and it was fucking great. Uh, so we'll be talking about that on the next episode. Thanks, buddies, for listening. Thank you, Michael, for joining. Brett? This was good. Man. See you later, buddies. <laughs> <laughs>